I've been living as a full-time digital nomad for the past one and a half years, alternating between being a digital nomad with changing countries every few months or every few weeks even, and staying in one place for a bit longer. And for a lot of people learning the code, this is the goal. It's not necessarily even about making the most money, it is about achieving your dream lifestyle. And for me personally, this was one of the biggest reasons why I learned to code, because coding is one of the top skills that people use to become digital nomads because of the fact that, well, coding can be done just from your laptop. You don't necessarily need to work from an office, but you need to go about learning the code and your career as a software developer the right way if you want to become a digital nomad. It won't just automatically happen. So as someone who has achieved it and who has lived through this and who has seen a bunch of other people do the same, I want to give you the four broad ways that you can become a digital nomad with your coding skills. And the first option that is the most obvious one is to simply have a remote job, meaning that you work a job for, let's say, an American salary, but you don't live in America. You go and live in Southeast Asia as a digital nomad or something like that. Now, this seems like the simplest and easiest option, and in certain cases it can be, but there are a few things to consider here that actually make it more difficult than it seems in a lot of cases. If you're looking at this from an American company's perspective, why would they pay you an American salary if you're not living in America, because if they're willing to hire globally, they know that they can pay a much lower salary for someone living abroad. So that's the first core challenge. The second core challenge is that for a lot of legal reasons, it can often be legally difficult or at least complicated for the company to essentially legally be allowed to have an employee on their payroll who doesn't live in the country where that company is based. Now, it's not impossible, of course, but often they will have to have something like a staffing company in the country where you actually live that actually hires you and things like this and it can get very cumbersome for the company so i would say that if you are able to find a company who is willing to pay you a western standard salary without requiring you to live in the same country as your company then this is absolutely the best option and you should go for it but i would also say that you should not bank on this because it can take a bit of luck to find that company i would say the best thing for you to do is just to get any job as fast as you can and just be as good as possible at that job to really show your value that company. This is what can overcome point number one, because once you have shown your value to the company, you then have so much more leverage to tell them like, okay, I've shown my value. I would like to go and live in Thailand. Is that okay? And if they really value you, they don't want to lose you, then they're a lot more likely to allow that and not reduce your salary because they value you much higher than the salary that they're paying you. Now, before we get to the next part, when you become a digital nomad, you will more than ever have to learn to keep improving your coding skills online completely on your own. If you're currently looking to improve your web development skills, I recommend you check out 25 HTML and CSS hacks ebook from HubSpot. The ebook, which I have left for you below to download for free, includes 25 tangible tips and coding templates to help you code better and faster directly from coding experts. These are tips that I think any web developer simply has to know if they want to be effective. And it takes like less than 15 minutes to go through this ebook. A few of my favorite tips that I didn't know before were tip number nine on how to use lazy loading to improve application performance and tip number 17 on how to use this meter tag to create these cool progress bars simply within HTML, which I just didn't even know was a thing. And after reading through this, I can't believe there's so many things about HTML and CSS that I just didn't know about before at all. Now this ebook was made by HubSpot, which is today's video sponsor. So a huge shout out for them for offering this resource for free. And again, you can download it for completely free down below in the description. With that, the second path to become a digital nomad is going to be freelancing. Now I can immediately hear you commenting like, oh, but freelancing doesn't pay well. But if you're saying that, then you're probably thinking of things like Upwork and like getting these gigs online from these freelance sites. And that's not actually what I'm talking about at all. What I'm talking about is becoming what is called a contractor. So what a contractor is, is that you're a essentially working for a company just the same as an employee but you just simply don't have an employment contract like you're not officially employed by that company you're simply being paid to deliver some kind of contracts or some kind of work so let's say a company who simply wants to develop a new website and they want to hire a developer to do that they're not going to have enough need for a developer to hire them as a full-time employee and go through all the legal consequences 
of having an employee in their payroll with all the benefits and everything else that they would have to provide this employee. In this situation, what they'll often prefer to do, especially in this job market, by the way, when there are so many risks around hiring full-time employees, is to hire a contractor where they can simply pay that contractor to produce that work. And after that, then there's no obligation for them to keep that developer on their payroll. Now, from a digital nomad perspective, this is very attractive for two reasons. First of all, freelancing often actually pays a lot better on a per hour or per month basis compared to being an employee. Why? Because as a contractor, you don't have the same job security and you don't have the same benefits like healthcare and all these kind of things that companies are legally obligated to give to their employees. So to compensate for that, they have to pay a higher hourly rate. And for them, that's often a good deal because that means they're now not sort of tied to this employment relationship. And the second reason is that legally, it is a lot easier to be flexible around the contractor's location because there's no laws around not being allowed to hire a contractor from a different country, whereas it can be more tricky to hire an employee from a different country. So that is why a lot of people who use coding to be digital nomads are actually freelancers. They just simply have a ton of clients. And obviously the challenge here is that it takes time for you to develop these client relationships, to have enough business coming your way, and you have to be a lot more on it. Like you have to be a lot more independent around doing your taxes, around making sure that you have enough work. Like you need to be constantly reaching out out of new clients and things like this. So it's more of a hybrid between being an employee and running a business. And for a lot of people, this is a really good combination of the benefits of both of these things. So of course, no path comes without downsides, but for a lot of people wanting to become a digital nomad, this is probably one of the best paths that I would look into. Now, the third path is to have a software business. So the big con with these first two paths is that there are gatekeepers between you and your digital nomad lifestyle. And these gatekeepers are the companies. So you essentially need to wait for these gatekeepers to give you the opportunities to actually start making money with coding. To bypass this, you can, of course, just create your own company. Easy, right? Well, as someone who is a failed startup software engineer. I actually ran a tech startup for a while that completely failed and I made zero dollars for it. I can tell you that this is not that easy as you can probably imagine. Now the challenge with creating your own software business is not even the coding part. Like you don't need to be the best coder in the world to create a piece of software that solves a problem for someone. But the problem here is finding the right idea. And the reason why finding the right idea is particularly important with software is that building software takes a lot of time. As we learned with our productivity software that we tried to build, it took much, much longer than we ever anticipated to even get the software to the point where we could give it to some test users to even see if people would find the software valuable at all. So that means if you pick the wrong idea, as we clearly did, it's just gonna waste a lot of time. So my tip here is to start with a real problem that you yourself have had. And I find that when you do it like this, it first of all validates that there is a problem at least for one person. And number two, it's gonna keep you much more motivated to actually keep creating this solution because you can think like, okay, even if this fails as a business, at least I have created something that I actually need. And in the worst case, if it doesn't succeed as a business, at least you can put it on your resume and tell the story of, okay, I had this problem and I created this solution for it. And that could actually end up being the project that ends up getting you your first freelance project or something like that, even if the business itself fails. And the fourth option is exactly what I do, which is content creation. And this is something that whatever you do with coding, I would recommend everyone combines with whatever you're doing, whether it be your job or freelancing or your startup attempt with content creation. Because whatever you're doing, creating content around it and sort of sharing your journey or teaching what you're learning will only amplify whatever you're doing already. And the first advantage is that whatever business you end up building or trying, you sort of have an automatic distribution channel for it. Like when we built our startup, I made a video about it on this channel and we instantly got a ton of users, which didn't mean obviously that it's gonna make a bunch of money, but most importantly, it gave us a lot of users who we could then get feedback from. And the second thing is that you're gonna build a personal brand, which even if your career, your freelancing doesn't end up being that successful, but if you're able to give value based on what you have learned, like sort of exactly what I've been doing on this channel for the past two years, then that thing might end up becoming your main thing if you happen to be very good at teaching or very good at sharing information. And when it comes to like getting freelance projects or something like that, let's you have a very technical channel where you share your project, you share a lot of knowledge around coding. That can be a very, very strong asset that can actually help you get clients, get job offers. I know a lot of people, my friends, who are content creators in the tech space who have literally got job offers at very big companies 
simply because of their online presence and it doesn't have to be the biggest online presence either. So these are the four broad ways. What I would probably do is first just focus on getting really good at coding. Like if you just get really good at coding and software development, like you don't even need to have a plan straight away on exactly how you're gonna do it. Once you get good, you get some experience and if you want to become a digital nomad, there's going to be a way for you to do that if you have shown your value, if you have shown that you can build good software. So if you're a complete beginner, that is what I would focus on. And if you wanna hear my full experience on why I left software engineering to become a digital nomad, then you can watch this video right here on the screen. So watch this video next. I'll see you in the next one.